We'll we'll try the cloud. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys so much for taking your time to hop on here and to learn with us tonight. Um, hey, Morgan. So we are going to be talking about booking appointments and coaching appointments to hold, which is so exciting. So before we get started, I'm just going to read a couple quotes by Mary Kay Ash that I love around this idea. So our founder, Mary Kay Ash said, nothing happens until somebody sells something. And I have taken it a step further and I, I have thought around this subject that nothing, nobody sells anything until somebody books something, right? So obviously Mary Kay Ash, the foundation of our business is selling the products, sharing the products with those that we love, sharing the products, which is so exciting. But really what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is obviously how do we get there? So I believe that obviously we need to sell product. That's important. When we sell product, first and foremost, face to face, and how we do that is by booking appointments. So I love that. Mary Kay Ash also said, she said, when you're out of bookings, you're out of business. And that I have 100% found to be true. When you're out of bookings, you're out of business. So, okay. Really quickly, I would love to know, what are some of your limiting beliefs around booking appointments? And this is where we can have a little interaction. So you could, I guess you could mute yourself unless you, unless you want to share a comment. Okay. So what, I'm so sorry. Would you mind muting yourself? Would everybody mute themselves unless you um, are going to be speaking? Perfect. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Okay, so what are some limiting beliefs you might have around booking? Anyone can share. There's no right or wrong answer here. We're just all, we're all sharing for the purpose of learning and growing because chances are if you're feeling that, somebody else is feeling it too. So what are it's, your limiting beliefs around booking? It's boring. So like physically sitting down and take the time is boring. Okay. What are some other limiting beliefs? Maybe what like holds us back from, from a, attempting to book appointments? Everybody's going to tell me no. Okay. Yep, I agree with that. Okay. Getting no's. Okay. What are some other limiting beliefs that we have? Just the scared of trying to contact people. Mm -hmm. So again, kind of the fear of rejection. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything major they want to like, that's just like every time you're like, I should really work my business. And then, you know, you kind of feel like a hang up in your spirit. Asking the same person multiple times and still getting the same answer. Okay. So not, maybe not having, enough, not having enough people to ask. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, I feel like the number one fear, I know the number one fear of men is rejection, but I believe that women experience that same fear very deeply. And so, you know, one thing I just want to encourage you to know is that in sales, in what we do, you will get no's. That, that is part of the process. But here's the crazy thing. If we don't experience no's, we'll never also experience yeses. And so I just want to encourage you to like, maybe just take your brain and just say, okay, you know what, what is a no? So what is the worst thing that happens when we get a no? What's the worst thing that can happen when we get a no? You get a no, you move on. Right. Yep. Literally nothing happens. Nothing happens when we get a no. You guys, and here's the funny thing. I would say that the greatest character building moments of my entire career is when I've gotten no's. The yeses do not build character, right? The no's build character because that's when we have the opportunity to decide to persevere and to have grit. That's what I love about this business is that none of us, it doesn't matter how good you are, you guys, it doesn't matter how long you've been in Mary Kay, you will get no's. That's a fact. 
I have gotten more no's than probably all of you combined. Probably because I've been in Mary Kay a lot longer than most of you and because I've probably asked a lot more people. Because I just, I came to the decision one day and you guys, I wanna remind you, this is a choice that I make daily when I go to book. And I, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second, my booking schedule. But when I go to book appointments, you guys, I still, six years into Mary Kay, driving a pink Cadillac, still have to tell myself, Libby, no's are not final and fatal. It is part of the process. No's will happen. And I am grateful for the no's because they redirect me to the yeses. I think about all the times too that people have told me no and I have not, I didn't stop there and I kept asking until I got a yes. And some of those yeses, I never would have asked if it weren't for those no's. And so you just, you know, you just gotta be um, kind of in a place where you say, I'm gonna get no's. And guess what? That's part of the journey, part of the process. And that's totally okay. In fact, I'm gonna learn to be grateful for the no's because they make me better. They make me stronger. You know, I mean, truly it's such a blessing. The no's are such a blessing. I, I went through a, a, a week, maybe a couple weeks ago where I got a lot of no's and I was just like, okay. You know, and sometimes we have to revisit like, uh, who am I asking? What's my heart condition when I'm asking? You know, there's a couple things and we'll talk about that. But really no's are, they're a part of the business. Any type of person that you know that makes a significant income experiences probably a lot of rejection and pain to get there. And so it's all good. And I think if we just make the idea around experiencing knows that it's not the end of the world, that will truly serve so many of us. Because I think that we all fear the no so deeply that we don't, we're not okay. You know what I mean? But really knows are great. Knows are just, okay, not you. Who's next? And so I, I think no's are just kind of like the bumper lanes. You know, if you go bowling and you have bumper lanes, no's are just kind of like, oh, nope, not her. Okay, back to the center. Oh, nope, not her. Okay, back to the center. Until you get to the end and you have your strike, your giant strike, right? That's what it's called when you hit all 10 of them. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we're going to talk about really quick four things when it comes to booking, and then we'll transition to coaching, okay? So the first thing with booking, number one, Decide that this is going to be a habitual thing in your business. Again, Mary Kay Ash said, when you're out of bookings, you're out of business. And so decide that this is going to be like a habit that you're going to create. And then the next thing is create the habit. So my best advice that I ever got when I started my Mary Kay business was if you treat this like a job, it will pay you like a job. If you treat this like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. And you know what hobbies do? They cost us money. And so if you treat this like a job, it will pay you like a job. So for example, if I had any other job and I was scheduled to go to work at say nine o'clock in the morning, if a friend called and said, hey, I need you to do me a favor, I would say, I'm sorry, I have to work. If um, you know my boyfriend or husband called and said, hey, I want to take you out for coffee or a date, I would say, I'm sorry, I have to work. If my car blew up, I would say, call my friend and say, hey, I need to get to work, right? So again, it's just taking that business seriously. So what I would encourage you to do is set an appointment with yourself that's non-negotiable, like any other job, and say, on my calendar, for this time, this is when I'm going to be scheduling my booking time. This is an appointment with myself, kind of like any other job that I can't negotiate around. If I want Mary Kay to pay me like a job, I got to treat it like a job. So this is something I'm going to do and not budget. Budge it, not budget. <laughs> not budge this, okay? So what I would decide is how much money you want to make. That's first and foremost what you want to decide, okay? If you are looking to, to make, I would say, $500 or less a month in your Mary Kay business, then I would say if you work your business like two to three hours-ish a week, you'll be totally fine. So what that's going to look like is 30 minutes set aside to book appointments and then probably two hours set aside to actually hold those appointments. So what I would do is I would have a consistent weekly time. So we're just going to pretend for the consultant who wants to make $500 a month, okay? What I would do is I would have a consistent time set aside, say Monday nights, every single Monday night from 7 to 7.30 p.m., I am going to use that time to book. And that's an appointment I have with myself in my calendar. So again, girlfriend asked me to go out to dinner. 
I can't, I have to work. Um, you know, super cute guy comes and sweeps you off your feet and wants to, you know, take you somewhere nice. I can't, I got to work. You know, um, you get the point. This has got to be a commitment that is scheduled like a job. So this is for me. This is what I have. Now, if you're somebody like me who I do this full time, I could not live on $500 a month, right? We need a significant more than that. So for me, I have scheduled three times a week that I have scheduled that to me, it's like, it doesn't matter what else is going on in my life. That is when I'm booking my appointments. So for me, it's between nine and 10 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings. You could catch my house being on fire and I would be booking. You could catch my um, kids that are sick home with me and I will be booking. You can catch, I will be sick and I will be booking. Because from, for me, if I'm out of bookings, I'm out of business. And my business is what pays our family's mortgage. And so I love that I have the opportunity to work around whatever life's thrown at me and I can do it anyways. So I will say that for me, I'm very disciplined. It's, it's, and it's not always nine o'clock sharp. If I have an appointment with somebody at nine, it could be 10. But for me, it's always in the morning on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That's very important for me to get that done. So I have set that appointment with myself. And nothing gets in the way, literally nothing. Like my husband, he'll always, you know, he works in the office with me on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And he always says he knows when I'm booking because it's like I'm in the zone, he calls it, where literally nothing gets in my way, I am booking. And so one thing that I would encourage you to do is have your diamond list with you at all times. So that when, what's a diamond list? You might not be familiar with that terminology. So a diamond list is just a list of all the people in your life who you would love to share the products with. This, I would say, make it like a long list that's ever evolving. Because what's gonna happen is that you are gonna run into a girlfriend at Target and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that was so fun. I haven't seen her in five years. And then you're gonna get back to your car and think, oh, I should, I should share Mary Kay products with her. I bet that would bless her. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, and you're gonna write her down on your diamond list. Okay, I keep mine in my planner. And so it's an ever evolving, ever changing, breathing, living document that's constantly changing based on who you are running into in your life because we're always meeting and running into new people. And so um, that is what I would say. Now, if you're in a place right now where you're like, I feel like I have no one to book, I would truly encourage you to say, what limiting belief am I telling myself that I believe I have no one to book? Or I'm asking the same people over and over again. Because what I have found is that the crazy Mary Kay people that the world talks about is the people who keep asking the same people over and over again who have already told them no. Okay, not everyone's going to be interested. And that's okay. That's totally okay. So what I would encourage you to do is to go through everything, every facet of your life. Go through your Facebook list, your husband's Facebook list, the contacts in your phone. Go through, you know, your childhood schools, et cetera. And just really rack your brain. Neighbors, activities you're involved in, kids' activities. And just rack your brain and make a list of every single person in your life who you would love to share the products with. And so that's what I would do is I would really start fresh and just start from scratch and just say, you know what? It's been a while since I've done this and I'm going to start from scratch and have my diamond list fresh and anew. I have been in Mary Kay for six years and I think right now on my diamond list, I have like 55 people. It's a lot of people. And it's because I'm constantly meeting new people. I'm constantly like reconnecting with new people. And so I don't ever feel like I'm out of people. Okay, so number one is decide that you're going to book and create the habit. So set an appointment with yourself. That's so important to do. And make it a non-negotiable appointment. I cannot stress that enough. If this is flexible, your paycheck will be flexible. If this is non-negotiable, you can count on that paycheck. Okay? So number two, create a message that gets you excited that you want to send out to people. So for me, what's a message that gets me excited? A message that gets me excited. I love, love, love having women give me their opinion of Mary Kay products. That is something that gets me excited. Now for you, you might be somebody who would say, um, I would get really excited about we're having new spring products coming out, okay? So you would love to do spring makeovers. Maybe that gets you excited. Maybe it's Valentine's Day makeovers, okay? Whatever you can find that gets you excited, I would take that and run with it. What I have used forever, I, I love this. 
I always tell people, now I've been in Mary Kay for six years, drive a pink Cadillac. I would say 90% of people in my life know that that's what I do for my job, right? Now, some people might not. So what I do is I actually message people and I say, hey girl, I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm a Mary Kay lady. And we have some of the best products like on the face of the earth. And I would really value your opinion of our products. You are a woman that is so sharp and I just admire and respect you. And then I usually throw in a sincere compliment in there because, you know, you always take personal pride in your appearance or you've always been so professional or I've always, you know, whatever. So customize it to that person to make it genuine. And I would truly value your feedback. Would you be up for getting together for 45 minutes and just giving me your thoughts on Mary Kay products? That's simple. So that's what I say because that gets me excited. I love connecting with people. I love like getting together with people and just getting professional women's opinion of our products. Like there's nothing that gets me more excited. Now for you, if you're like a glamour girl and you're like, oh my gosh, it's Valentine's Day is coming up. I would love to get together with people and find like the perfect red lipstick shade, right? Whatever. It does not matter what the, what the, um, what your message says, as long as it's authentic to you and you're actually excited about it. Another idea could be if you are driven and you really want to kickstart your business and you want to see, say you want to see 30 faces in the month of February, that's your goal. You want to give 30 women the opportunity to experience our products and you want to grow your customer base by 30 people this month. I would tell them that I would say, Hey girl, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a Mary Kay lady. And this month in my business, I set the goal to pamper 30 women and get your feedback on our products. Would you be one of my faces this month and give me your feedback? Whatever that looks like to you, find some sort of message that gets you excited. That when you think about sending this out, that like gets you excited knowing that. I've gone through different seasons in my business and I've switched it up. I don't think there's a cookie cutter right or wrong way to do it. Just make it authentic to you where you're genuinely excited about it. So that would be point number two. Point number three. Now this is the hardest one probably. Remove all judgment from who you think would say yes. Remove all judgment. So we want to take the spanks that are on our brain and we want to take the spanks off. Because what you're probably doing right now is you're probably thinking of, oh, this person or that person would really like Mary Kay products, but I bet if I asked her, she'd say no because uh, she doesn't really wear makeup or I think she already has products she likes or um, what are some other, the common things that I hear. Um, she's so busy. She wouldn't want to spend time doing that. Or um, I, I don't think I've ever seen her wear mascara. Whatever your thoughts are. Here is what I found out about Mary Kay business. Being in Mary Kay business six years now, I have found this out. A lot of women don't wear makeup because they don't know how. No one's ever taught them. Busy women have the most interest in our service because it's convenient. And number three, women care about their skin, period. Period. I don't think I've ever met a woman that says, I don't care I have wrinkles. I don't care I have age spots. That doesn't bother me. I don't think I've ever met a woman that said that. Now, I have met women that say, I prefer not to wear makeup. But here's the cool thing. We offer so much more than makeup, skincare, body care, fragrances. I mean, we have the whole array. There's nobody we cannot service. So I'd say number three, the most important thing when you're going to book appointments is remove all judgment from who you're going to ask. When I was new, I was so picky with who I would ask because I was like, they have to like makeup, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I found. Makeup snobs are usually the most annoying people to book with because when they're there, they're like, oh, well, I tried this product. It's like, okay, whatever. The funnest people to book with are those who have a totally clean mind around it. They really don't have any experience. They don't have a ton of experience. And so when you're bringing them products that are incredible and they get to learn in a safe environment, those are honestly my favorite appointments with people who are not glamour queens. The glamour queens usually drive me nuts because they're like picking everything apart and they have like way too many questions that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> and so I have found that the most fun people are the ones who genuinely just want to learn. And so remove all judgment. And so I, that's what I would encourage you to do too. Go through your list again, go through your Facebook, your contacts without a judgment on there. Because it's, we as consultants, beauty consultants are expert prejudgers. 
We make the decision for them whether they're interested or not. And I'll tell you this, my best customer to date is somebody I never offered a facial to. She actually approached me because I prejudged her. I thought, oh, she, this is literally what I thought. She doesn't wear skincare. She does not wear makeup. She probably has no interest in skincare. She seems like super busy. All the things in my head that I was telling myself. And she actually approached me one day at church and said, hey, this was probably five years ago when I first started my business, six years ago. I, I heard you started telling Mary Kay, there's one product I like. Could I try that? And I was like, sure. So I gave her that product. And what I remember is my mentor always told me, never sell a product without offering a facial. Never sell a product without offering a facial. So I said, I would love the opportunity to have you come over and just give me your feedback on our products. I'll give you a fun little facial. And she's like, I would love that. So she came over. That one facial was $470. She bought everything I put on her face. You know what she told me? I never knew makeup because I never knew how. Thank you for taking the time to show me how. And you guys, I, at this point in my life, was no glamorista, right? I literally knew like, okay, you a rub foundation around your face, right? Cheek color goes on your cheeks, lipstick goes on your lips, eyeshadow goes on your eyes. That's literally what I knew. And we just played and had fun. And I just taught her very basic, basic, like you have blue eyes. Well, let's try browns and coppers. Like that's so basic, you guys. And to this day, you guys, she is my best customer and orders an unbelievable amount of Mary Kay product between her and her mom and her sisters. They order probably three to $400 a month. And so that's why you guys, it's so important to not prejudge and to not cast our judgment onto other people, whether they would or wouldn't be interested. Mary Kay, I would say, is just like a pack of gum. You offer it to everybody. Some will say yes, some will say no. It's not about you, it's about the gum. Do they want the gum? Do they not want the gum? If somebody offered you a piece of gum and you said no, that doesn't mean you don't like that person. That just means that right now you don't want gum. That's the same thing with our Mary Kay business, my friends. It is okay to offer it, and if they say no, they just are maybe not interested. Maybe it's not the right season for them. Maybe they have products they love already. You guys, that's okay. Here's what I found. The longer that we stay in the game, the more people will say yes. Because honestly, what happens, people see so many people start businesses and they think, are you just going to be a flash in the pan? Are you worth my time? What I have found is that the people who stay in Mary Kay the longest have the greatest success. Look at Michelle Jostad. Jostad. I always say her last name wrong. I've known her for years. Sorry, Michelle. Forgive me. She's a perfect example of somebody who has just stuck it out. She's gone through the no's. She's gone through the seasons. And now she has unbelievable sales success. Look at Sarah Chambers. Another perfect example. She's been in Mary Kay for two, three years now as well. Three years in Mary Kay. Has just stuck it out. And she sold $500 sitting on her couch with an allergic reaction in her armpit this weekend. That is exciting, my friends. Just stay the course. And then the fourth part of this booking um, little training, number four, is here's the thing. We have to ask. That's the part number four is actually asking, okay? So number one is deciding you're gonna do it and creating the habit, setting an appointment with yourself and making it non-negotiable. Number two is creating a message that gets you excited. Number three is removing all judgment from who you think would say yes. And number four, ask. That's the most important part. You have to hit send on the message. So another thought about creating the message, I would keep it brief. Keep it very brief, my friends. When we sit there and we word things and we have like 12 paragraphs, all people think is overwhelmed, 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 overwhelmed. What we wanna do is keep it really, really brief. Hey girl, I'm a Mary Kay lady. I'd love your feedback of our products. Would you have 30 minutes to get together next week? I have Monday or Saturday available. Brief. You guys, you want this to be like, I heard a statistic one time that said, the most responded to messages are the ones that you can read on the lock screen. So you know the ones that just come up like, and you can read the whole message like just right there. You don't have to actually open the message to read it. 
So make that your goal to make it brief and short and to the point when you're communicating with people. Okay, so how are we around that? Does that give anyone any support around booking at all? Libby, this is Amy. Can I ask you a question? Yes, I would love that. Hi, Amy. Hi. Okay, so I'm wondering, do you do the majority of your correspondence through email or do you, how do you decide who you're going to call, who you're going to email, who you're going to text? Like, you know what I mean? Do you do any calling anymore? Yes, I do do calling. Um, I would say I do most of my uh, correspondence with my customers through text message, I would say. Emails get very little response unless I do, I would say I have like maybe three customers that truly prefer email, but I would say the majority is over text or phone call. Okay. And so I would just say, you know, go with your gut and listen to your intuition, whether a phone call or a text message would be most beneficial. Um, I would say in this today's day and age, most people respond best to text messages, respond quickest to them. Um, if you have an iPhone, what I've found to be absolutely the best tool on the face of the earth is the voice message like thing. Mm -hmm. So you can do that over Facebook Messenger. So that's kind of the best of both worlds is that they don't have to like go to a voicemail, listen to that, delete it. It's amazing. I love the voice message thing. So if I have the opportunity to, I will do the voice message thing. So that's iPhone to iPhone. You can do that. But you can't do that with Androids, unfortunately. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. And then again, I would say the biggest thing is just keeping it brief. What do you do when they just don't respond to messages? Morgan, that's a great question. So here's what I've found. In today's day and age, people are more distracted than ever. More distracted than ever. We usually have our phone on, our Facebook on, our TV on, the radio on, 29 dings and dings coming in at all times. When people don't respond to your messages, there's one of two reasons, okay? I have found, number one, they forgot about it literally looked at it, set their phone down and just didn't respond. I have done that you guys so many times. And here's why I choose not to be offended by it. We all have life going on. I, I would say, just make a decision right now that you're not going to be offended by it. Okay. Just say, Hey, it is what it is. When people don't respond, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be an offended person. Like I'm going to choose to live my life unoffended. So I would follow up. That's what I would do. I have, um, I have a system that I use. It's actually incredible. So if you are looking for a system to track all this stuff on, it's an app called, or not an app, actually, it's a website called Teamsy, T-E-A-M-Z-Y, Teamsy. That's what I use. It, you can do your first month free, but then it is $29.99 per month after that. But it's an unbelievable system that I use that you can literally log every single contact you make in there. And so I log in every day and it tells me who I need to call or like talk to that day. So for example, Morgan, say I message my friend Sally about, you know, maybe booking a facial, hosting a party, a makeover, whatever. I messaged Sally. So what I'll do is I'll enter that into my system. Now you, you can just literally do this on a paper calendar too. It doesn't, you don't have to use a fancy system. And then I'll just, I'll literally put it, um, I'll select to follow up with her in three days. So when you're texting people out, you're texting Sally. So what I would do is I would literally write Sally in three days on my calendar to follow up. So that way you don't have to remember, it's just there. Because most people will not respond on the first try. Thank you for bringing this up. This actually is so huge that you did this. Most people do not respond until the third or fourth um, reach out I have found. Because again, this is not a priority to them. This is a priority to us. If you think about like doctor's office, dentist's office, um, all those people, they send you like a bajillion follow-up calls, right? And so I would just not be offended by it and I would just follow up. Here's what I would say in the follow-up message. I would say something like this. So say I sent that out. I would love your opinion of our products. You know, crickets, don't hear anything back. Three days later, I don't, I don't respond like two hours later, like, hey, did you get my message? You know what I mean? Don't be that person. Usually I give them two to three days and I would say, hey, I, um, I was just wondering, did you get my message at all? Let me know. You know what I mean? And usually they'll reply and say, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I usually send that out one or two times. So um, that's what I would do. I would send that out one or two times. And then if they don't reply, then I would reach out to them again in like a month or two. So again, just keeping them in your system. So I'd say the most important thing with booking too is have some sort of system where you track things or you will have zillions of people that fall through the cracks. 
And studies have shown that with, with people like in sales, like in our industry, 90% of the sale, so like the booking, right, is made on the fifth through the seventh attempt. Most people quit at the second attempt. Isn't that crazy? So I have some people, you guys, that I have, and again, this is not stalkerish follow-up, right? We're not doing this every day, but this is over a couple of months. If we're not hearing back from people, I do not just like let them go. I will put them, so I always reach out one time and then again in three days and then again three days after that. If I don't hear back from them after that, I'll put them in my system again for like two months down the road, right? And then just maybe life was like crazy or hectic or whatever, you know, I'm just, I just, I'm just not offended. I'm not an offended person because what I've realized is that people have family members that die, kids that get sick, bosses that are crazy. You know what I mean? So it's just like people have seasons of life and life is always happening. So I'm just like, I just don't get offended by that stuff. I just reach out again. So that's a great question, Morgan. Thank you for asking that. Okay. So we're just going to transition for our last like 13 minutes here to talk about coaching. And the first thing that I have here on my, um, so once you have the booking, this is so exciting. So once you have a yes, you have a date and time selected. This is so exciting. So one thing that I would encourage you to do too, when you get somebody that responds, they say, yes, I'm excited to try Mary Kay products. This is going to be a blast. Then what I would do is the worst possible thing you can do. The worst possible thing you can say next is when are you free? Because what they're going to do is they're going to look at their calendar and they're going to say, oh my gosh, I have a wedding next Saturday and my kid plays soccer in two weeks. Oh, this month is crazy. I can't do it this month. Sorry. I'm so busy. I thought I could, but I'm so busy. They have two things on their calendar and their brain can't process that because it's too many options. So what I would say to them when they say yes, yes, I'd love to do that. Sounds great. I would say, perfect. I hold my appointments on Mondays and Thursdays. What would work best for you? Because then they'll think, oh, Monday nights, you know, Sally has dance. Thursday nights are free. I don't think I'm anything going on Thursday nights. Thursday nights would work. And then you would reply with two more options. I have the 7th or the 21st available. What would work for you? Again, we want to be people who are proactive, not reactive with this. Because what, what, we, what we communicate to people when we say, when are you free, is that I also have nothing going on in my life. And I'm just like, no business happening here. I'm free as a bird. We want to be people who are in high demand and you, each and every one of you are extremely high demand women. So what we want to do is have our Mary Kay calendar scheduled. So we know exactly when we're holding our appointments. We're not just like a loosey goosey free bird, right? I don't work my business 24 seven. I hope you don't either. And so I would just take the time to really sit down with your spouse or significant other, whoever that is, and decide what are your times that you're going to work your business and only book your appointments during those times. So for example, if you're like, I have Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon that I can hold appointments. Say, great. So when someone says, yes, I hold my appointments on Saturdays. Would morning or afternoon work better for you? What I have found is that people respect you as much as you respect yourself. And so if you have already your structure that you have time set aside to work your business, you guys, people will make that work for them. So Okay, so anyways, when we, when we get the yes, we want to give them the two options, then schedule a date and time so we have it scheduled. So say you have a facial with Susie Q in three weeks, right? That's when you have it scheduled. So what I would really encourage you to do is to follow up, follow up, follow up. Now, it does not always have to be about Mary Kay, but what I would encourage you to do is if you have an appointment that's three weeks out, three weeks out, so you have a party or a facial that's three weeks out, I would encourage you to touch base with that hostess at least two times a week until that party is happening. You want to be on the forefront of her mind so that it does not fall through the cracks. Now, I would not reach out about Mary Kay every single time. I would say, say she posted pictures on Facebook about like a weekend getaway with her husband. I would message her maybe Tuesday and say, hey, Sally, oh my gosh, your weekend looked so much fun. What was your favorite part? Again, just get that dialogue so Sally remembers this is Libby, your Mary Kay lady. We have that appointment in three weeks, right? You're not asking her about Mary Kay, but you're reminding her that you're in her life. And then maybe Friday that week, I would say something like, oh my gosh, Sally, we're getting new spring products in. I can't wait to try them at your party. Are you so excited? 
again, and she's going to reply and be like, yes, I'm so excited. That sounds wonderful. So again, you're not saying, hey, are you getting everything ready for that party? Did you follow up with all those guests? You're saying that without saying that, right? So we're just kind of being soft and approachable about this. And then the following week, I would say something like, um, been thinking about you lots. I got all the goodie, bag goodie bags ready for all of your guests. Have you heard back from anyone? What are they saying? Did they like the invites? You know, just again, being in touch with her time after time after time. I would say if you have a span of time, so you have three weeks, the first week I would maybe do one touch point. The next week I would do two. And then the week before the party, I would do three. Like you want to make sure that you are in constant communication with the people you're holding appointments with, or they will not hold. Mary Kay Ash always said that a, um, an appointment worth booking is an appointment worth coaching because you will have so many cancellations if you do not coach your appointments. And coaching appointments just basically means that we're doing all of the front, all the work on the front end to communicate with our hostesses to make sure that they hold. So if you have parties scheduled, so this is with where you have a hostess and she's inviting guests, the most important thing you can do is send out invites in the mail. I know this sounds so old school, so 1929, and we're in you know 2020, but I would encourage you to go back to the old school place. We are so bombarded with technological messages. We get texts, we get Facebook event invites like all day long. I probably get five Facebook event invites a day. That is lost in translation. If I were to get an invite in the mail for somebody's party, I would probably be shocked, honestly. I just went to a different company's direct selling party on Friday and I did not get anything in the mail, but the hostess, who's a really good friend of mine and my old neighbor, she must have followed up with me five times about coming to her party. I was like, girlfriend, I will be there. Girlfriend, I will be there because her follow-up was so spot on. I was like, wow, that lady, that consultant from that company, is doing this really, really well because she has followed up with me five times about this party. And I was so reminded of it. Like it was on the forefront of my mind constantly because I just knew like, you know what I mean? The, my, um, my friend who was the hostess was constantly reminding me about it. And I showed up and I had a great time. So the best thing you can do is send invites in the mail, stand out. What I would do, the first thing that I would do when you book a party. So you have somebody says, yep, I'll host a party for you. I'd love to get some free products. That sounds great. The first thing that I do, the first point of communication is I would say, hey girl, I would love to get a list of names and addresses so that I can send out some fun invites in the mail. Now you guys, these don't have to be crazy or hardcore. Just do something cute that looks exciting, professional, um, and cute, right? If you need some ideas, let me know. I have lots of invites I can send you of pictures of what they look like, what mine look like. So get the names and addresses. And what I always ask the hostess, I always say, most people give me about 15 names and addresses. So about five to seven people show up. When you communicate that expectation of 15 names, you'll get 15 names. If you just say, hey, give me names, then she'll probably give you three or four because we didn't set that expectation. But when you say, I would love if you could get around 15 names and addresses for me, could I touch base with you on Thursday? Would that give you enough time to get those addresses? So I say today's Tuesday. She says, yeah, that sounds great. So then on Thursday, I'm going to say, hey, Sally, I'm so excited to send those invites out. I'll send her a picture of the invites and say, what do you think? And she's going like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. And then usually they respond with all the names and addresses. So when I know that when I send those, when I get the list of names and addresses, I can guarantee that that party is going to hold. That to me is when I can lock it in my calendar as like, it's for sure happening. Because what happens when we don't get a list of names and addresses is that the hostess, Sally, who has all these great intentions of hosting this fabulous Mary Kay party for you, her life gets busy, her kids get sick, her husband goes out of town for work, right? And then pretty soon, it's two days before the party, she forgot to tell anybody about it. She feels horrible. She's scrambling, texting a couple of people. Hopefully they can come. Nobody can come. She feels awful. She's texting you, I'm so sorry, this can't happen. Nobody can come. And you're disappointed, you're upset, and you don't think Mary Kay works. When really what it boils down to is we didn't do our job in the beginning. And so I would say the greatest thing that you can do to eliminate frustration and cause peace in your life is to send out invites in the mail. 
get a list of names and addresses and send out invites in the mail. Because what I love to do is I love to take control of that process. When I get a list of names and addresses for her, that just, she totally just like released herself from anything that she had to do for the party. I now gain control of that and I can create an amazing experience for all these women. So I would say that that is the most important thing that you can do is send out invites and then be, after you get the invites sent out, be in constant communication with the hostess. So something I would say after I send those invites out, oh my gosh, Sally, I'm so excited. Invites get in the mail. Let me know when your friends get them and what they're saying. A couple days later, I would say, hey girl, I'm so excited. Did anyone say that they got their invites yet? A couple days later, I would say, hey girl, I'm so excited. Can't wait to see you next Friday. Has anyone responded that they're so pumped to come? I wanna start getting their goodie bags ready. I always have like a little goodie bag. You guys, it's literally like a plastic bag with like a sample in it. It's nothing crazy. Because what happens, you guys, is when you create a customized experience that's so easy, everybody wants to book a party. So when people show up to the party and I have five goodie bags laying out with their name on it and a free little goodie bag, they feel so special and so loved. It creates a magical experience. So I would say that that's the most important thing. But the biggest thing you guys to remember is when you have baby shower invites, it comes in the mail. For me, I know my dentist, you guys, they send it in the mail, my reminder. My doctor's office sends it in the mail. Reminders, reminders, reminders. When I book a flight to go somewhere, what are you getting in the mail? Reminders or in the email. Reminders, reminders, reminders. As human beings, we are forgetful people. We overbook, we underplan. It is our job as the beauty consultant to constantly be in front of the talking, following up, talking, following up about our appointment so that we get that to hold. So we have three minutes left, two minutes left, I just saw. What are some questions you have for me around this? Anyone have any questions? Or what was a new thought that you had? I would love to hear that too. Kayla, I see your wheels spinning. What are, the, what are some thoughts that you've had? New thoughts? Not sure yet. Just thinking. Does that kind of make sense though? How we want to follow up? Yes. That's awesome. What about anyone else? Any new thoughts or questions? I love it. I learned a lot of new stuff and stuff that just like helps to be refreshed. Awesome. What was a new thought that you had, Susie? I love, um, how you told us to follow up better than just feeling like I'm pressuring them every day. Do it like three weeks, you said, or three days. Like for the, after the initial contact for like yeah. to book the appointment. Yeah. Yeah. I usually wait three days mm -hmm, yeah. before I, before I say anything again. And I usually message him. And if I go to message him again and it's still the same message for me, I won't message him. <laughs> Because I feel bad that I'm messaging oh, again. <laughs> you know what? I kind of look at it this way. I I have things that like I truly want. I want to purchase. For example, there's a lady that uh, owns a boutique that I really wanted a sweater. The sweater's really expensive, but I really wanted it. And um, so I had my friend contact her, the boutique owner, and say, "Hey, have her message me." Well, she, the boutique owner messaged me. I saw my phone. It was a Sunday. I don't really hang out on my phone on Sundays. I totally forgot. So then she messaged me again and I was in the middle of doing something and I totally forgot. Then she messaged me again. And you know what? I'm buying the sweater. I'm so <laughs> grateful. She messaged me a couple times because I literally want that sweater. It's so darn cute, but I just literally forgot. Like, it's just not a priority to me. Buying a sweater is not a high priority to me right now in my life. Right. I want it, but it's just not important to me. It's like, if I forget it, it's not the end of the world. We're the same thing with Mary Kay products. We add value to people's lives. We're just not a priority, right? So it's our job to follow up to make sure that we give them that great service that people deserve. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm noticing most is I think it is all about customer service. Um, I feel like, yes, you have to, you do have to follow up. You have to kind of disengage from the nose. You have to not really worry about the nose. You have to let those go, but it's just really important to be an authentic person who cares about somebody else who wants to, um, 
who, who wants to help them, you know, purchase something, look better, whatever it might be. It's really just being authentic and providing that customer service. Yes, you're absolutely right, Amy. And people will sense that, you know what I mean? If you're just in it to sell, they'll be like, okay, buzz off. But if you're in it to truly serve other people, people sense that and they appreciate you for that. And that makes such, that makes all the world of a difference. If we're truly in this with the heart of service to serve other people, that's when we don't have to worry about being pushy because we're just concerned about making sure that they have their needs met. And that's the first, that's the only thing that matters in our business is serving people truly. And so I love that. Thank you guys so much for, um, thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, invest 40, five minutes of your evening. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. And I am, um, we have Facebook live at nine. If you're around for that, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to talk about all of our new products. Then we have tomorrow our celebrate and connect event. So thank you guys so much for investing of your time. I so appreciate you all have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.